Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Atmosphere Sunlight Index. Now, what the heck is that? Basically, this gives you a bit more creative control over the lighting in your atmosphere for use in exterior scenes. So this is not really useful for interior lighting, but if you're doing exterior lighting, this is an extremely useful tool to know about. So let's jump right in. So here I've got a simple lighting setup. I use the Environment Light Mixer to set up everything correctly. If you've never used the Environment Light Mixer before, I recommend you check the video I made right here just so you can get up to speed on how I set up my scene right here. Okay, so I'm not going to cover that. I'm going to assume you've already set up a basic atmosphere. Again, if you don't know how to set up a proper atmosphere, watch this video and you'll be right up to speed. Okay, so now in the scene, I've got a directional light. I've got a skylight. I've got volumetric clouds. So it's very important that you have the sky atmosphere in your scene. And in your sunlight, it's really important to search for atmosphere. And you need to make sure that atmosphere sunlight is checked right here, all right? Otherwise, this whole tutorial is not going to work for you. So let's dig right into what the heck the, in the atmosphere sunlight index does. So I'm going to select my directional light here, over here in the outliner. I'm going to hit Control w to duplicate it. So now we have sunlight and sunlight 2. So I'm going to select sunlight 2, and in the search details panel right over here, we are going to search for index. Okay, so right now, atmosphere sunlight index is set to zero. Let's set this one to one. And now you'll see, whoa, our sky suddenly got a lot brighter. Why is that? Let's take a look and let's rotate this directional light a little bit. You'll notice we now have two suns in our sky. So the atmosphere sunlight index is most commonly used for having a sunlight and moonlight. There's a hundred other use cases for this. You can have like two suns if you're trying to do uh, a Star Wars-esque like Tatooine binary sunset type of look. That's just one of many examples of what you can use this for. This gives you a lot more creative freedom. This can be used in a multitude of ways. It's kind of a hidden feature, but super useful to know about. So one thing to keep in mind is you can only have two atmosphere sunlight indexes, okay? So by default, the sun atmosphere sunlight index is set to zero and you can have one other. So it's zero or one, it's binary. So essentially you can have one sunlight and one moonlight. Now I'm gonna take this one step further and I'm gonna show you guys how to use this atmosphere sunlight index in order to achieve a kind of blue hour lighting as seen here. We've got some nice blue light coming in, nice blue, but there's no direct sunlight, right? Like there's no, um, the, the, the sun is behind a cloud or it's already set. So I want to get the same look, but it is tricky to get this look right out of the box. But that's a fun challenge. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I just want to preface this by saying that this there are a hundred different ways of doing blue hour lighting. I don't want be, I don't want you guys to start commenting like, oh, well, you could have done this or you could have done that. Like, yeah, you're probably right. There's so what I'm about to show you now is just one way of doing it. If you come up with a better solution, good for you. That's awesome. This is just one of hundreds of different ways of achieving blue hour lighting. This is what I find gives you the most control. But like I said, there's more than one way to get there. So right now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide this new sunlight. I just want to have one for now, okay? Now, the really nice thing about the sky atmosphere, okay, is that it's going to give you really nice gradients in your sky, right? So if I rotate my sunlight here, okay, I'm going to lower it like this. Now, let's... Let's look up and we get this beautiful gradient. We get this nice bright orange and it kind of cools down and go. We get the whole spectrum of colors, right? We get the, you know, from the cold red at the bottom and all the way through yellows and greens and blues. Beautiful lighting. But you'll see uh, our scene gets very dark here. Okay, so I want to get this look in Unreal. But you'll see it's, it's kind of tricky to get that. You don't get that cold lighting. Like the sun is, is below the, the, the horizon right now. Uh, but we're not getting any of that cold light. So what do we do? Now, the first thing we can do is, you know, in the post-process volume, we can change the white balance a little bit. So, you know, because right now everything feels a little bit warm. So I'm going to select my post-process volume, and I'm going to search for white balance. And let's bring the temperature down a little bit. Okay, let's make this a little bit more blue. There we go. I really want to get that, you know, it, it, it's actually after sunset. I really like the, the, the gradient that we get in the sky here. Beautiful, beautiful colors. 
But what do we do now? Like, obviously, it seems way too dark. I'm going to select my sunlight, and I'm going to brighten this up a little bit. By default, it's set to 10 lux. I can set to, like, 50. So we got a much brighter sky, uh, but that's fine for now. And we're starting to get a bit more light in here. So I'm going to bump up the value of my skylight up to 2 or 3 or something. Just to get a, a little bit more light in here. But you can see, so now we're getting a bit better exposure, but the colors still don't feel quite right. It's still very reddish. You don't get that cold blue hour look yet. So let's grab our post processing volume again, and let's change the white balance even more. I'm going to bring this temperature way down even more to make it very cold. And maybe even, a, I'm going to shift the tint a little bit as well. Something like that. So now we're getting something, you know, that's a, a little bit colder. So now things are looking a, a little bit better, but it's still a far cry away from this, right? So what's next? This is where we're going to start using the Atmosphere Sunlight Index to kind of help us out, get a bit more directionality, get a bit more color in the scene, okay? So I got to go ahead and I got to unhide this second light up here, which is obviously the scene looks way bad. Now I'm going to select this. I'm going to change the name. I'm going to call this um, indirect light. And I'm going to rotate this all to the opposite side of my main sunlight. I'm going to rotate this indirect light here. I'm going to rotate it down a bit. <clears throat> but now you'll see like I don't actually want two directional lights hitting my scene, right? I I only want light coming from one main direction, and this one is going to be mostly my indirect light. So what do we do? How do we make sure that, that it doesn't actually cast light? So select your indirect light here, your second direction light, and we're going to search for channel. By default, it's set to channel zero, and I'm going to uncheck it. So now, by unchecking channel zero, this new light, the second directional light, is not actually giving out any direct light, okay? But notice something, it's affecting our scene a lot. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a lot, a very strong color. I'm gonna make this like a very deep blue, something like that, okay? And now you'll see like, whoa, we're starting to get somewhere here. Now, if I uncheck this, it goes from very, you know, kind of very, almost warm to very bright and blue. And obviously this is way too bright. So I'm going to tone this down to maybe like an exposure of five lux. If I bring it to zero and make it five, four. Yeah, four is, seems pretty good. So you might be asking yourself, why the heck is a light that's not casting any light affecting my scene so drastically? Now, the reason for that is because of this atmosphere sunlight index. Okay, you'll see it's actually visible, but it's only affecting the atmosphere. It's not affecting your actual geode. It's not affecting the surface of the planet, so to speak. Okay? And because our skylight is set to cap real-time capture, it's still capturing that bright thing in the sky and thus illuminating your scene accordingly. So I'm just going to ex exaggerate this thing real quick. I guess it's to 10. And let's see what happens when I rotate this the other way. Do you see the, pay attention to Manny right here, okay? When I rotate this, do you see how the light is affecting him? But it's soft indirect light, it's not direct sunlight. If I had, again, if I had set my channel back on, you'd have direct light. But this time it's only the indirect light that's affecting him and affecting the color of our sky atmosphere. So I'm just gonna leave that here right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at our reference again. Now you'll see we're, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. Now, of course, this image has been edited. You know, it, it got some curve adjustment on it. It's got a very strong vignetting. But, you know, the mood that we have in this image is we're getting close to getting that in the scene. So I'm going to bring this brightness back down to four or something. There we go. So now, in order to bring our image a little bit closer to the reference, I'm going to go ahead and add some very, very strong vignetting here, too. Normally I would do this in post, like in Photoshop or Resolve or whatever, but you know, we can kind of preview the same look right here. So in a post process volume, we're going to type vignetting. And I'm going to bring this real strong, something like that. Because look again, looking at our reference here, the vignette is pretty strong. But now the main differences are mostly hue related. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the white balance to just match it a little bit more closely. 
So we're going to go to the post process volume again. I'm going to type white balance. And let's tweak the temperature yet again. And maybe change the tint a little. Now you'll see we're, we're getting closer. We're getting much closer. I think I need to tweak the tint a little bit more. It's not going to be a perfect match. Because again, this image has been properly edited in Photoshop and the tools in Photoshop are made for editing photos for them to look good, right? So really what we want to do is we want to get it about as close as we possibly can, but it doesn't have to be an exact match. So right now I'm kind of happy with the direction this is going. This is a kind of a good blue hour feel here, but now we're getting pretty close. And I think the only thing missing right now is maybe a little bit more directionality. So just a little trick here, something that I, I tend to do a lot uh, is I'm going to cheat it. I'm going to go ahead and add an area light. I'm going to go to the play factors up the top here, and I'm going to choose rect light, and I'm going to bring a big rect light in here. And I'm going to move it above Manny, have it face down, something like this. Because look, the reason why I'm doing this is because let's take a look at the rocks, right? Notice how the rocks have this nice, like, top lit look to it. The sky is still very bright and it's affecting these rocks. It's really giving a, a bunch of 3D shape to these rocks. So see that it's the, the, the top of this rock here is not being lit by the sun. It's being lit by the indirect light of the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and fake that on our character here. Lighting in CG is all about cheating and getting a good looking result. So now that I have a rect light placed above him, you'll realize it's obviously a way too strong and it doesn't look that good. I don't like to having those strong shadows on him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of that rect light and soften the light on it. So, so I'm going to select my rect light and source width and source height. I'm going to set this from 64 to like 512. And now just like that, you'll notice the lighting getting much softer on it. We don't have that strong shadow anymore, right? So I'm going to turn down the brightness from eight to maybe like two, three, so let's get closer to Manny and toggle that light on and off to see what it's actually doing. And now this is without the light and this is with the light. So it's just adding a little bit of something, an extra little bit of, of light shining on. Very soft, very subtle, but just a little something to get him to pop. And just like that, we're starting to get a result that is getting pretty close to our reference. Obviously, there's some major substantial differences here, such as, you know, there's eight is no water, the rocks are a different color, the rocks are wet in our reference. Uh, we're missing a lot of elements to really make this match, right? Um, the sky is different, the, the clouds are different. Of course, I'm aware of that. That's not the point of this tutorial. We're not trying to basically make this scene, we're trying to get a, a similar mood. And really, the main point of this tutorial was to show you guys how to use the Atmosphere Sunlight Index creatively for you know unconventional purposes to kind of help you with your lighting get a bit more control over the final look of your scene so one new thing i want to start doing every week is bonus tip so let's say you wanted to change the physical size of your sunlight or your moonlight this is how you would do it so we're going to select our sunlight and in the search details panel we're going to look at source angle okay so you'll see it by default it's at the 0 0.535. And now look look at the size of the of the sunlight right now. Now if I increase the value and set it to like 10, you'll see the sun actually gets much bigger. I set it to 20 or 50, you'll see this is how you change the size of your sun. You can also make it smaller. So if I set it to like 0.3, you'll see it's just a tiny little speck in the sky now. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you change the size of your sun, it's also going to affect the shadows. So the larger the sun, the softer your shadows will be. The smaller the sun, the harder your shadows will be. So I'm gonna take a second to show you this. Let's pay attention to the shadows of the grass and the ground here. Forgive the terrible textures, this was done real quickly. So now let's look at the shadows right here from the grass. You'll see they're very sharp. So if I select my sunlight and set the source angle down here to 10, you'll see the shadows suddenly get much softer. Okay, same so if I set the 20, it'll get even softer. If I set it back down to 0.2, you'll see everything gets really sharp again. So, like I said, the size of your sun directly contributes to how soft or hard your shadows will get. So I'm gonna be going way more in depth on this topic in a new video that I'm working on that I'm really excited about, and I can't wait to show you guys. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. It should be out in about a week, maybe two. So stay tuned. That being said, that concludes this week's video. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hit that like button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next week.